Recyclico, making lithium ion last forever. Recyclico's patented recycling process achieves up to 100% recovery of battery metals from lithium ion batteries for electric vehicles, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, and aluminum. Recyclico Battery Materials Incorporated trades on the TSX Venture AMY, on the OTCQB AMYZF, and Frankfurt ID4. For more information, visit Recyclicode.com or phone us at 778-574-4444. Recyclico, making lithium ion last forever. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Mark Leibovit, editor and publisher of the Leibovit VR Newsletters, also known as VRTrader.com. He's speaking to us from Arizona. Welcome back to the show, Mark. Glad to be here, Jim. Thanks for having me. Do we have a special offer for our listeners? For new subscribers, uh, we offer our 50% off uh, promo code, 2022 half off. And you go to VRTrader.com and just enter that in the uh, promo code slot. Again, 50% off. For any time frame or subscription you choose, or multiple subscriptions if you wish. Again, 2022 half off. And also, I generally make to describe disclaimer I'm not a financial advisor, nor do I provide financial advice, just a newsletter publisher. So, uh, we've seen on the stock markets once again uh, a major corrective area like we saw in August. Is this telling us, here we go, this is going to be the, the recession, this is going to be, you know, a, a bear market uh, run for the hills, or was it just a minor adjustment? Well, you know, you got the election coming up here in the U.S., and there's so, so much manipulation going on in the markets uh, this time of year. And, um, you know, I'm a big follower of that theory. You know, many don't believe it, but, you know, we do have government intervention in the markets uh the uh, equity stabilization fund and the plunge protection team and literally not discussed at all in the media. And then you've got Jay Powell at the uh, Federal Reserve. We don't know whether he's acting politically or not, but you know, a lot of it is hinging supposedly um, this interest rate cut that everybody has been salivating about for literally a year, almost a year uh, coming up supposedly on September 18th. And Jay Powell is, um, Jackson Hole meeting, you know, was basically saying that, um, you know, be supportive of, um, you know, the job situation. You know, the Federal Reserve has a lot of mandates. One of it is full employment, uh, lower, uh, or steady interest rates. Um, you know, and they just, you know, they, they just have their directions mixed up a little bit, obviously. So now we have, this report on Friday, which everybody is holding their breath about, this is the Bureau of Labor Statistics report. Um, and the question is, will there be a weaker job labor market reported? And, you know, I call the BLS the Bureau of Lying Statistics. We already showed how they, you know, revise and change their numbers. Just recently, there was an 800,000 share, um, not share, job number, 800,000 number change. And, uh, you know, this has been going on for the longest time, and we know a lot of government statistics exclude a lot of key uh, data, as we discussed off air, you know, like um, food and energy. But that doesn't apply to the labor report. It's just that the government numbers, as a general rule, are not reliable. So I presume if the um, jobs come down and we have more unemployment, and you and I can have a whole discussion about this. I know you're, you have a bit of an insight into this as well, but the, um, there he is. If it's down, that he's more likely to lower rates, which I think is a given anyway. But would he lower more? And the question is, does that really make a difference? You know, if we're in a recession anyway. A lot of statistics say that. You know, that says well, the stock market really uh, has discounted something that really doesn't exist, and we are in a recession, and the market should actually go down. But you know, all the traders out there, you know, would probably jump on a fifty-point uh, rate cut. And maybe even the 25 point uh, rate cut as a reason to try to rally the market. And again, you've got all these manipulative forces in the election and so many variables out there. So it's a very treacherous time for traders because, you know, you, history says many times when the Fed starts to lower rates, 
uh, stock market actually goes down, not up, because it's reflecting some negative event. So, you know, it's really going to be interesting how this all plays out. As a trader, you know, you pretty much take it a day at a time. You just wait for this time to pass. But traditionally, you know, you have a week September. Everybody's aware of that. It's plastered all over the walls on Wall Street. And you know, we had a little sell-off here the last few days. And, uh, you know, it could be temporary, as you just suggested. And it could rally back and won't have the big, big, normal September, October crash type scenario, which, you know, is, is not usual, but often does happen. So, you know, there could be another outlier event. We've had so many outlier events already. The list is long already this past year in terms of things that came from left field that nobody expected. And, um, you know, we can just, you know, you know, we don't have to go through all the geopolitical and geocosmic events out there that have been unfolding this past year. But despite that, the market seemed to manage to come back. And that's because I believe in the intervention of the government and others to try to support the market here in a political situation. So um, we'll see how it all plays out. We played the short side here a little bit last uh, week or so, a couple times. And you know, mention that to our uh, readers that uh, it was worth a trade out there. And, um, you know, the question is, you know, could this possibly be the beginning of a bear market, as you indicated, the possibility? I don't know. It's hard to say with an election that would actually happen. There would have to be some dramatic, you know, geopolitical or geocosmic event to throw the market into a kilter, and anything could happen. We've seen this happen. So, um, at the moment, I'm just assuming it's steady as she goes. The Fed's out there here in September, going to manipulate the rates down a little bit, maybe encourage the market for false reasons. But, you know, maybe that'll happen. And uh, a lot will depend on what the election does in November. You know, neither side probably will accept the outcome. And it could end up going into the Supreme Court as it did, you know, a couple decades ago. And what does that do to the market? You know, so... You know, uh, maybe there is turmoil after November. The market does nosedive for a while. we got to watch the numbers. So the numbers right now technically show the market hit a little top, and uh, we have to wait and see uh, how it plays out between now and uh, the end of the month. So, um, you know, different sectors are doing different things. Um, you know, the gold market pulled back a little bit with the market. As I mentioned in our previous interview, you generally see all these markets move together. Bitcoin did the same thing. So, you know, you know, a lot of the speculative money was out of the market. All the markets tended to pull back. We saw crude oil really weak uh, the last week or so, um, which traditionally is bullish for the market because that lowers energy costs and that sort of translates into putting more money into consumers' pockets at some point. So um, if you're bullish, the fact that crude oil pulled off here a little bit is actually a bit of a positive and commodities as a rule here pulled back as, as well gold not as much but other commodities even copper had a pull back so um it, the general rules if you see commodity prices come down um it's not necessarily a good sign for the growth in the economy but it says there's less inflation and uh that usually helps the uh you know, the, the, the cost of producing goods and that translates into more profits for the companies and, and that's actually sort of bullish for the market. So a lot of cr cross currents here at work and, um, the crude oil decline perhaps could be related to anticipating a Trump victory and uh, more production of oil that perhaps which could depre depress pr prices a bit. So there's so many variables to be watching now. I mean, it's, it's a safe bet for me is, you know, this is a good time. Unless you're trading day to day, and there's always individual stocks, we always find something that's moving. But you know, it's a good time to sit in treasury bills and uh, you know just sit it out a little bit because of the volatility here, and see how this all plays out. I mean, look at the Dow went over forty thousand. We had a huge move in the market. Um, the high tech stocks. I mean, so much has happened in the last several months. I mean, if you just took money out of the market and just put it away somewhere in safe interest bearing. You know, securities, you're probably better off this time of year and considering how much of a move we've, we've made, you know, there's bulls, bears and pigs, you know, we've had a huge move and, uh, you can't, you don't always have to be in the market, you know, long term, you can argue otherwise, but after such a huge move, I think, you know, it's a good time to rest and sort of let the, uh, you know, let, let, let the dust settle where it's going to settle. We'll have more with Mark Leibovit right after this. 
Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. Mark, what's the picture for gold? Is it going to help you if uh, we do have a massive downturn in the stock markets? You know, they generally throw the baby out with the bathwater. That's sort of the problem. You know, history says when you get huge sells off, sell offs in the market, even back into the crash way back in 1987, I mean, gold went down. I mean, it's, of course, that's many prices, years, and time, but uh, to talk about in any event, uh, there is risk. But, you know, my position is, you know, it's already broken out of a multi year move or we're in a multi year advance underway and you just have to be prepared for these two three hundred dollar corrections uh in, in an uptrend which ultimately i think will carry it substantially higher what we did for the newsletter people is we put on a hedge you know we bought a couple inverse etfs in silver and gold and uh we're marginally profitable in those you know on paper just as a hedge but we kept our gold positions you know just uh because of my long-term view that, you know, we're, we had mentioned 2,700 is a reasonable target. We already got to 25-something and 35 to 3,700. It's the next big target, but that could be a year or two out. And, uh, you know, uh, if you're just willing to uh, hang in there, I think the trend's your friend, as it it's says. But look at the 20-year or 30-year time frame you have to discuss there. I mean, there is volatility. I mean, you know, so back in 2000. Uh, but, you know, three, four, you know, time frame, you know, uh, you're, you're sitting, you know, under $1,000 an ounce. And, uh, you know, now suddenly we're way up here at 2500 So you're talking a lot of time, you know, 10, 15 years of patience if you really believe the big picture is up, which I do. So we're we're in there um, and just a, little, a couple little hedges. And I'm prepared that if the market had a big nosedive that, you know, Gold could pull off just because if selling occurs, sometimes people on margin have to sell off uh, positions, and some of them are leveraged, and sometimes that affects some of the gold shares and gold itself, and it could be, you know, a bit of a correction. But I think the the bottom line is the governments are out there buying it, and um, I think some of the manipulation that's been going on in the gold market for decades, you know, may have changed here a little bit because of the view of the central bankers that they really want to own the, own the stuff. So, uh, bottom line, I'm remaining bullish. If you're worried about a downturn in the stock markets, should you turn to things that seem to be quite reliable, uh, utilities, tobacco companies, uh, things like that? Absolutely. But, you know, when the markets all come down, it, it's like your question about gold. You mean sometimes selling comes into even to some of the stronger stocks, but we've seen some consumer stocks like coca-cola and so forth and johnson and johnson and uh general mills and some of these you know popular stocks that uh you know are you know not so much related to the economy but to related to you know consumer needs hold up in these environments and some of these stocks have done well recently so um yeah that, those those are alternative places but you know when the market has a quote-unquote crash and i'm not saying it's going to happen every you know Everything comes down. I mean, maybe some less than others. Um, this is a tough time of year, but, you know, with so many variables out there and with political influences and so forth, it's really a tough call. So we're, you know, I'm taking the position is, you know, uh, it's not a bad time to put some money uh, into some safe places and see how this all plays out. And if you're in the in stock market for the big picture long term, and, you know, many are, then you just wait it out. And, you know, if there's a, 10, 20 percent correction or so, you just stick with it because ultimately it does come back. And there are some technical measurements in the Dow up as high as 60,000. I, uh, I don't have a time frame for that, but I'm guessing in the next two, three years, I guess that could happen if the right ingredients came into play. But we've already had a huge move and I'd rather wait for a bigger, you know, bigger correction before betting on a much higher number like that. So, you know, after the election, what's going to happen? You know, what's going to happen early next year? We have a lot of geopolitical issues, war issues, so much stuff going on out there. I mean, if we did have a big sell off, it wouldn't surprise me. So for me, I think, uh, yeah, you can hold some gold. You can trade some individual stuff that we're doing, but 
for me, the lion's share of money should be like parked into something safe here and see uh, how the storm blows over. What's going on on the cryptocurrency front? Same thing, pulling back a little bit. Uh, GPTC, the crypto ETFs, pulled back here. Um, you know, when you see the big names like NVIDIA and the high-tech names pulling off, you know, that's sort of sp- most speculative wild money. And, uh, you know, that's, they pulled off. So I think, you know, a lot of the fear in the market, you know, the fear index is, you know, neutral to slightly elevated here. And uh, that affects the crypto. You know, and speculation is running rampant, and um, everything looks great. The uh, you know all these speculative, even uh, the cannabis stocks, you know, had a little bit of a pop, thinking that the BLS, the yeah, the BLS, the um, DEA, I get the government agencies mixed up. The DEA um, was going to reschedule, and then they came out with a statement a few days ago. Oh, we're going to wait till after the election. When originally they said July. They would have an indication. So some of the steam was taken out of uh, the uh, cannabis stocks, which start to rally, thinking on the rescheduling that might be a big play. So, you know, when you asked about uh, Bitcoin, it's the same kind of thing. You know, it just uh, steam sort of came out of it here, I think, because of all the reasons we're discussing and the time of year we're in and the uncertainty on the interest rate and the recession f- front. So, um you know, each dog has its day, and we've talked about how the Bitcoin and the cryptos have these two, three-year cycles. And um, despite the fact that those new ETFs were created, mostly through the uh, efforts of uh, BlackRock, um, that the uh, play may be over for a while. You know, just going to so tread a while before it builds steam for another move higher. I ultimately do think they're going higher, but, you know, we've had a big run for a while and they're consolidating here so the charts will tell us and uh you know i think of a core position and something like the bitcoin trust is okay long term it's like owning gold you know just something you're in if you want to participate but the, the momentum seems to have been lost here a little bit jim so we're just uh i wouldn't be aggressive just yet i would wait to see actually the safer strategy is i would look for another washout in bitcoin down to the mid 40s it got down there a few weeks ago on the um, Mount Cox story, or you wait for a breakout above that double top at 73,000 in Bitcoin. And if it did that, you'll probably see a move toward 100,000. So it um, depends on what your cup of tea is in terms of volatility. Anything happening on the geocosmic front? Well, there's a lot of stuff. Um, you know, people don't particularly excite or excited about, you know, uh, tying in, um, you know, geocosmics of what's going on. But, you know, we had a, just give a brief example. I mean, we had a new moon and many people don't like me talking about this, but, you know, maybe you like me talking about it. But the bottom line is, you know, there are cycle changes. We saw the market top here just a few days ago within a day of the new moon. And I generally follow the lunar cycles. So that worked out really well. We were talking about that to our subscribers watch out that's coming around september 2nd and it was a day before that i believe when the market actually peaked and we've got the um autumnal equinox coming up here september 21st 22nd and uh history says markets tend to change direction around the equinoxes and solstices so we always watch these times of year and certainly we're seeing some volatility here and uh it's funny that the Equinox is just around the uh, time the Fed's supposed to talk about interest rates and the stuff going on on the uh, on the solar uh, front. According to the analysis that I'm reading, solar cycles are are continuing for to uh, new highs. And there's a big surge here going on in solar activity, and there's some large uh, sunspots on the far side of the sun that are being written up here, and as, as the sun rotates or as those spots turn toward the earth that supposedly creates a higher incident of solar activity and flares and stuff here on the planet so um so they they say according to the research here the activity continues to intensify so what does all that mean well you know there's a solar event you know our gooses are cooked you know what i mean this is something we can't you know put into uh stock market charts or economic forecasts it's an act of god so we always just watch this stuff and we've already seen some of these solar flares affect satellites and including starlink uh, elon musk satellites and all kinds of fun stuff up there so we're in high activity it wouldn't be it would be no surprise to me that there's some dramatic solar event and it causes some devastation here on the planet 
totally left field that nobody really planned or thought could happen. And suddenly uh, we find ourselves in a serious situation in terms of communications and technology and so forth. So, uh, which uh, could affect food supplies and all kinds of fun stuff. So the stuff doesn't, something you just can't predict. It may happen, you know, one year or 50 years from now or a hundred years from now, but we walk, we just watch it. And we've already seen some recent impact of some of the solar activity. So I just keep watching it and, you know, you know, there are ways you can try to protect yourself, but on a mass scale, if there was a major uh, Carrington event like we saw in the uh, mid 19th century, there's little we could really do here except wait it out and try to, you know, evaluate the damage afterwards. So anyway, that's what's going on out there. You got the seasonal pattern here, September 21st. You just had the new moon, and uh, we'll see what the uh, how that all ties in with all this other economic uh, stories and political stuff that's un- unfolding. But anyway, we keep tracking it, and uh, we're just in this crazy time frame. Like I say, good time to stand aside. Mark, always fun chatting with you. It's always fun with chatting with you, too. Thank you so much. Talk to you next week. My guest has been Mark Leibovit, editor and publisher of the Leibovit VR Newsletters, also known as VRTrader.com. He was speaking to us from Arizona. If you have any questions for Mark or for any of our guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on X at House Street. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.